Thank you. Yeah, good morning, uh, viewers. And thank you very much, ma'am, for giving the, me this opportunity to speak on this subject. Hardly this subject would be discussed anywhere in the, any of the books or any of the forum. Generally, we discuss about the dairy farm, but we do not discuss about the designing and why designing should be done and etc. Everything we'll cover in this presentation. And I'm really thankful for the viewers and good morning, I said, because I'm in UK and I'm taking this call from UK. And in India, it's afternoon. So again, good afternoon to everybody. So uh, we chose this, uh, this topic after we have discussed so many times in so many videos about establishing a dairy farm. And now we thought that this is, this is the most important part of the establishing a dairy farm uh, in Indian parlance, as well as in the, in the foreign countries, wherever you uh, want to set up a, a dairy farm, you need to design the shed. And shed designing is uh, a very big issue in Indian condition. Generally, people do not think on that. And generally, they are not taking it seriously. And they end up using a lot of labor and a lot of energy loss. And that we used to save in this case. If we, if we design a shed which can save your energy, which can save your manpower, and which can be optimized very easily, so those things are uh, actually uh, a cost saving for you, for the farmer. So I'll be starting with this. And first, we will discuss about what are the pre-essentials. We all know, we have discussed several times, we have made uh, many videos say about that that what are the pre-essentials about the dairy farm? And we know that there has to be a sufficient agree, fertile, irrigable, irrigated land. And uh, that without that, that's not possible. And even many of the schemes and even government scheme, even the privates, those who want to start, unless there is a land, it's very difficult to start the project, a dairy farm. Sufficient groundwater is, is, uh, has to be available. Because you know nothing can be dependent on the supply water. It has to be a groundwater availability. And that too also on a long-term basis because the dairy farm is generally for not less than 20, 30 years. So that's the reason uh, these are uh, these we have covered into the pre-essentials. Good management of feed and fodder. Without that, no dairy farm can exist. And for that, uh, yes. Uh, that's, that's one of the essential, and everybody knows no, no more explanation required for that. High yielding cows, of course, the milking machines, that's required. So these are the animals which convert the forage and some of the concentrate into the milk. And that's why the high yielding cows are required. And dependable labor, most important in Indian parlance, in foreign Western countries, developed countries parlance, this is not at all required because here everything works on the AI. Everything works, works on the artificial intelligence. Everything automated. Uh, we'll discuss maybe for five, 10 minutes uh, about foreign country and how the uh, automation is working there. So <clears throat> this 24 by bar seven observation and data management is most important in Indian parlance as well. After you have all these things managed, done, arranged, then there is a need comes about the layout design. Now you are going to plan, after planning for the essential, now you are going to plan about the, uh, the layout design for the dairy farm. So the, here we have to take what are the essential elements. So in the planning itself, we have to think what is the soil. If you are taking a land, because land could be of any kind of soil. So it's very important to have the foundation because if it is a, it is a very loose soil, you know the foundation will not stand and the farm shed will not stand for longer. So if it is a hilly track and the, the stones or hill rocks are loose rocks, so it becomes very difficult. If it is a water logging area, it be, becomes very difficult for the animal to survive because diseases will come. 
so more two things are most important fertility of the land and the stability of the land how strong the land is so these two things are essential if we are choosing a land for establishing a dairy farm and uh, slopey the land now we are going for the landscape like slopey hilly water logging undulating any kind of winding lot of wind is there lot of hot air comes so all these thing because there are, there are no vegetation there are no trees so you know the air will come with the more velocity <clears throat> so this we have to consider while planning for purchasing a soil a uh, purchasing a land and water as we discussed the here we have given in the land we have given some tentative uh, idea that how much land is required for 20 50 cows and 50 to 100 cows so land varies and you just see there there is additional land also required for the you know cultivation of fodder so those things we have, we generally discuss when we discuss about establishing a dairy farm but generally we are talking about the logistics we are talking about the essentials of for uh, constructing a shed then it, this when we write the supply water is not you know dependable yes animal need water 24 bar 7 and that case it if it is dependent on the supply water it is not possible to uh, manage the uh, animal farm similarly power power has to be on dual system alternate dg has to be there in the farm so for that you have to make the foundation for that you have to make the shed you have to locate it properly so that it takes minimum to uh, you know run the wire in different sheds all those things have to be taken in, into consideration the drain is most important most important and most important it is a lifeline for a dairy farm if you want that farm should not have the diseases this is a must to be considered it depends on the and the uh, land uh, elevation if it is uh, slopey if it is undulating so uh, sometime this drain is become difficult and if the drain is is not planned properly the drain is clogging is very usual in case of the dairy farms especially in india the market distance most important the road connectivity silence animal need to be put into the silence atmosphere too much noise noise pollution air pollution soil pollution everything affects to the animals which generally we ignore in indian parlance we consider that any soil is fit for living the uh, living for the animals and the heavy uh, the high uh, yielding animals generally require this kind of sensitivity in our mind for their you know comfortability so length and height of the of the this shed will depend on the number of animal the climate and the area where you are constructing the shed yeah we will another point is roofing roofing we leave it to the fascination to the to the interest to the liking of the owner the owner want to put it what kind of you know uh, design to the roof and also as per the climate also design changes suppose you want to make the uh, a, a dairy uh, shed in kerala you have to consider that six months rain will be there so for that you have to consider the design roof design for that similarly if you are going for the haryana so you have to take the roof design according to the hot waves coming punjab haryana uttar pradesh if you are going to the eastern part then you have to see the humidity lot of humidity will be there so then you have to uh, design the shed according to that the roofing especially help into these kind of characters if the air blow if the air flow in the system in the shed is uh, is managed properly so all these climates all these odd situations can be managed for the animals facilities so we we have to have a, you know where the labor will stay where my my machinery is will be there where my agriculture equipment will be there what are the safety measure we are taking like the the animals should be safe the uh, the goods should be safe 
the entry should be restricted. So, so many facilities we have to develop. And most of them, if we are able to take it to the artificial intelligence, take it to the automation, always it is better because labor in India, in India, the labor for dairy, as there is no school in the country for, for training the laborers of dairy farm. So they are all unskilled laborers. They must be learning somewhere, some kind of skill, which is mostly traditional in Indian condition. So they are mostly unreliable people. They are very feeble people. They want to leave the, uh, they will leave the uh, job any time, any moment for a minor issues. So, or they may create a lot of issues. So always it's better to go for the minimization of the human handling. Diseases also will be, you know, saved. Animal will be saved with a lot of diseases uh, coming into the farm if we minimize the human intervention. Environmental control. The heat management in Indian parlance, it is the most important. Generally, we don't care about it. We just tie the animal below the tree and that's enough. That is, my, uh, that is our air conditioning for the animals. Uh, labor effective. Uh, labor uh, effective is the dual site. Feed alley. It is a shed design. Are we going to head to head? Are we going to the tail to tail? Feed alley. Is it important to have the feed alley? Is more important or the big alley? Which one is more important? So it is, has to be decided by the owner. If he feels that milk alley is more important, cleaning and milk alley is more important, then he will be going for the tail tail. If he feels that feed alley is more important, which is mostly popular in the Western countries, because the, the everything, cleaning and everything is done automatically. Milking, everything is done automatically. It is on the milking parlor. So in that case, what is important is without labor, if we can feed the animals. And that is why they go for the head-to-head -head shade designing. We'll discuss head-to-head -head and shade, shade designing. Tail-to-tail -tail is what? Right. So then we go to the, you know, uh, cleanable floor. Floor is most important. Mostly in Indian condition, we consider that floor should be soil, just soil. We don't consider that there will be some, uh, you know, water coming in that. Some mud will be created and that will create the hoof, is, hoof issue. The animal hoof is very sensitive part of the body. And they get foot rot very easily. Animal become male, uh, lame. And animal uh, once become lame, that time this milk laid down comes down. So many things is, is uh, related to the productivity. Generally, we ignore in Indian condition. So in that case, most important to go for a, you know, the floor designing. Floor designing is most important. It should not be slippery. It should not be uh, water retaining. It should not be up and down. So, so that the animals stumble on it. So, so many things. And of course, the drain connectivity and, you know, some connectivity is a must as we have discussed. The site plan. Site plan is the blueprint. Actually, site plan is the main plan which decides that where what, which shed where, which store where, milk store where, the, 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 the farmhouse where, office where, entry where, truck entry where. Everything is decided by the floor plan. And floor plan is made in the beginning itself. And based on the floor plan, the site plans are made, total site plan. Suppose you have decided all the sheds. Where, it, the, where will be the animal shed? Where will be the heifer shed? Where will be the milking shed? Where will be the uh, stores where we are going to have the uh, other things like uh, loafing area, like DG set, like BMC, like record room, all those things. Based on that, then we create the uh, site plan. Site plan will add the open areas. What the floor plan says is only the construction area. When we talk about the site plan, it is the open area, including the constructed area, that becomes the site plan. Then cross-section plan. 
we'll show you how the cross section plan looks like okay because it cannot be discussed over here uh, may not be understandable the farm house we have to design the farm house and where where it should be located and you know whenever a person want to establish a, a farm he will go for the land purchase and the land size land direction all changes person to person client to client owner to owner and in that case the, the floor design will change as per the land it depends which side is more comfortable land for the animal to rest and which side is more comfortable animal to just go and walk and come back so like that those things have to be designed looking to the land size land shape land you know uh, undulating part up and down okay so then comes the farmhouse we have already discussed farmhouse is generally of the dual purpose thing if the owner or any guest want to live over there it's always good to be there in the in a serene atmosphere with the animals of course in indian condition we have not we generally not uh, found this kind of thing hardly the larger organized farms are working in indian condition now it is coming up government of india has come with the lot of good schemes where the larger farms are being established and they will come up after 4 5 year india will have lot of good farms which can be visited which can be seen and understandable that how the animal comfort is being maintained in those farms quarantine isolation and carving dispensary etc are the part of this right so let's go to the other thing that what is the construction part we are going to have we have been planning now now what is the construction we are going to do footing it's very important that what kind of footing we are going to give should be light with it night na heavy so footing is what what we call that the the base when we put the uh, uh, we, uh, you know we want to construct a shed and we want to construct the outer wall then we first we have to dug up uh 2 to 3 feet inside 4 feet 5 feet sometime i don't know how heavy you are going to have the roof design based on that you have to be uh keeping the depth of the footing and footing has to be with uh, uh, 12 inch uh, uh, into the depth is 8 inch this much has to be rcc so first we have to put some kind of concrete and those kind of thing <clears throat> and then you have to go for the heavy footing light footing and heavy footing two parts are there in the footing so heavy footing is again uh, we we go for the 24 inch and depth is 12 inch so generally if you are going to have the roof design which will have weight and which is going to uh, which require or even the land land is not so compact it is porous land so you need to go for the heavy footing footing if the land is good no issue and land is up no issue so then you can be uh, even the light footing right foundation wall so generally thickness of the foundation wall is 12 uh, 9 to 12 inches height is 24 to 36, 36 inches and thereafter it is all open it is only pillar right so then the foundation material that has to be cement concrete and if we, the reinforcement has to be done that has to be done on the floor so that reinforcement also we recommend and that becomes the rcc the rcc we recommend on the floor floor of the ground because all weight of the animal suppose there are 100 animal going to stand so 60 600 kg into 100 so you you imagine these many you know these many kgs this many tonnage is going to stand on that uh, ground so that has to be made with the full compact you know footing and uh, you know rcc kind of uh, a floor damp proofing damp proofing is is most important if you are not doing the damp proofing after some time if the if the animal the area is prone to the damping so then you will see the cracks in the wall the 4 ft wall or 3 ft wall which you are going to make as a uh, outer wall 
or partition wall, it will crack. So the damp, damp proofing is important to restrict the cracking of the walls. Tomorrow, if you construct the whole thing up above, the roof and all, and then suppose it the wall cracks, so you see the losses. So similarly, pillars. Pillars are generally we consider that it should be the round GI pipes. And that can be to three inches to four inches to even eight inches wide, depending on the weight of the or length of the you know shed. For pillars, also we have to give the base on the on the RCC. So RCC base on RCC ground will be a real footage for holding the up structure. Then height. The central pole is generally we recommend about the 15 to 16 feet and the side pole is 12 to 13 feet. So that is what a generally a thumb rule, but it is not the, it is not the restriction. If somebody want to raise the height, somebody want in the Kerala situation, if you want to uh, lower the height, Yes, it can be done two to three feet uh, variation. Type of roofs are, you know, lean type. So we'll show you these things. There are gobble type, leaf type, and roof. What are the other things? Semi-roof monitor or what that. So uh, here we will discuss about that. It could be what is the roofing? Most of the clients are confused here. What to do? Should it be MS pipe? M MS, uh, uh, you know, material. Should it be powder coated sheets? It should be a puff plus MS sheet, or it should be fiber plus puff. What kind of? We should be tiles or what? Thatched? What should be there? So generally, you will find that people construct the shed, but for roofing, they are totally confused. See, you have to match the roof with the climate of the area. That's very important that roof has to be matched with the climate of the area, right? So in, so that is why it depends on the owner what and the area and what is his fascination. Suppose somebody want to make the tile, okay, fine. Give the tile, somebody want to make the thatch, okay, you can do that. But the floor, we don't compromise. Look at the how many sheds are required. My only few slides are there now to discuss. The rest slide will be, will be running only. So the milking shed, it's a tail to tail. Dry animal shed, tail to tail. Heifer shed, head to head. Why heifer shed head to head? And why these two tail to tail? Because the, when we are talking about the milking animal and dry animal, we are talking about the full developed animal. So milking become important over there and cleaning. In case of heifer, there is no milk. So we try to go for the head to head. Calf pen, agri equipment store, farm store, dry fodder store, green fodder, come chaff cutter, uh, chaff cutter and the silage making area, cattle feed and raw material store for the cattle feed, bulk milk cooler, milk, lab, record, all these things is required. These are these places are to be created in a shed. The dispensary has to be there. Suppose you are going to keep 50 animals, 100 animals. Obviously, you are you need a dispensary every day. Some kind of dressing, some kind of uh, your bandages are required, or even the it should be ready for any kind of happening. The carving room. This carving room itself is an annexer of the dispensary. So once the animal is carving, you need a lot of you know, uh, medicines, you need a lot of disinfectants. So dispensary is important. Labor quarter, labor obviously has to live in the farm. They, if all laborers are visiting laborers, that farm cannot run in profit. So there are two types of laborers. One is always living in the farm, 24 bar seven. And another labor is a visiting labor. They can come and go, no, no uh, uh, problem into that. So quarantine comes sick animal room, animal washing area, office come farmhouse, DG said, and uh, animal washing uh, area again, I think it is repeated. This is uh, ET shed, most important. Now the larger farms which government is supporting 
about 50% subsidy on that. It has to be embryo transfer technology. It has to be sexed semen using lab. So open manager, uh, manager, manger and water trough. Manger is the place where the animal takes the feed or fodder. So that we call manger, where the animal eats. And water trough is a kind of trough where the animal drinks water. So this manger and water trough is created inside the shed as well as inside the loafing area. Animals should have a concept in their mind that feed is available all the time, everywhere. They are satisfied and then your milk yield increases. Boundary, entry, etc. So now we will be showing only some of the designs. This design was made in Faridabad for Faridabad Dairy Farm and it is running very well. So the land was very small. In compact land, we created everything. So you see the entry over here, if you see my cursor, the entry is over here. And from entry there is, we have given some parking area and then the, the shed is here. So look, generally we keep the shed away from the people moving area, right? So then here also, uh, these are the heifer shed, uh, these are the calf shed, and these are the different sheds for, you know, silage making. And then these are the stores we have made. And here, see, there are bars we have created. Once a person is entering from here, he has to have a foot bath. After foot bath, now he is entering into the restricted area. Again, a foot bath and hand wash. Then he is going to the animals. So again, foot bath and the, you know, wearing some. Uh, you know, cloth, apron, and then entering into the area. So how we design thinking on all these things that the animal should be safe, farm should be safe, no, uh, you know, entry of the diseases. Of course, it will come sometime, but at least we can reduce to 10%, 5% instead of letting it open for the 100% disease entry. So these are the things. These are the compost pits we have designed. It, is, it has to be near to the shed so that the cleaning will automatically will go to the sump and from there it can be pumped to the uh, slurry part, can be pumped into the, or labor also can be used. See how labor intensive. The, the dung has to be thrown over here. So it has to be somewhere nearer to this and it has to be closed kind of compost pitting. Here there is very less kind of you know dung will be uh, generated. So the distance can be there. It can be made there, right? Loafing area is the most important for animal. You see, mostly 60 to 80% area you have to keep open. This is a farm in the Kerala. It's also running. They are, they are having about 150 animals. And see, there is a reservoir over here, water reservoir. So we designed like that, that how to enter. And this is a road. So see, how the demography changes. So, uh, how the topography changes. So start from here. This is the entry. This is the gate. So, this is the entry. An office has been given right over here. The person who is coming, they, they will just come here. And this is all parking area. So, then they run to the farm and farm entry is somewhere below this, right? Which, is, which cannot be shown in one. It will be too small. So, we have made in different parts. See, the disp dispensary is here. All three stores are here. One is a green fodder store, is a dry fodder store, is a cattle feed store, everything, see. Then you go to, yeah. Then you are entering over here. You find a kind of a road comes over here and then you are getting the food bath. You are entering from here into the farm. And this is the farm area for the animal. This is a loafing area for the animal. See, there is a water trough. There is a, a manger given here, and this is the milking shed. This is the milking shed. See, and both sides we have given the loafing, loafing area. So, why we have given loafing area both sides? The animal should not feel clumsy. They want to give, go this side, they will go that side. They want to come this side, they can come this side. So, 150 animals, suppose 60 and 80 animals are being 
being milked at a time so they will be released at a time the moment they they are released at a time i think i'm exceeding to the time I just move faster yeah this is the transfer section here we tell that suppose you cut a shed transversely how and what technical things it will give so this this is the central pole this is the side pole these are the walls and these are the you know you know pillars so the farm shed is always open after 4 feet 3 feet because the the wind has to pass on the back of the animal it should run on the back of the animal so that is how the and plus it also tells that what is your lining what is your you know rcc how much thickness everything what is the drain size what is the central walking alley everything it designs this is actually being constructed in hyderabad on my design so see how they make the foundation then they show the places where the pillar will be attached see see this is a kind of you know they have to make there are two uh, pictures one is the, i wanted to show how see the pillar pillar has to be so strong so that it cannot you know collapse and this is the kind of you know uh, uh, a store where the construction store type of thing where things can be locked and kept like this the power is there thereafter i am running into the slide which we have i had an assignment in uk a place called near swindon there is a place called uh, <coughs> bottom on water so this place is bottom on water village and there is a is a farm and see how the construction they have made they are not very fascinated about these things but mostly since it is a cool place uh, more than 6 month the temperature is below 3 degree so they have to keep a close kind of shed i will show the picture inside the and this is the exit for the animals to go to the pasture land i'll show everything Just two more minutes these are the different activities they are taking they are making cheese they are making so many things so okay so that's their see these are the animals inside the farm once you go inside you will get the enclosure every entry is without man handling nobody is available in the farm not at all and this side where my cursor goes this side is the processing room and you will see everything the processing machine is running on timing of its own hardly a single person is there in the machine and finally the milk comes out in a silo pasteurized morning milk pasteurized evening milk pasteurized matter ends there are hardly about uh, about i saw what when i visited about 60 animals in this farm not very big farm these are their products the milk they are selling it is called the coatsworth coatsworth organic dairy they have their email anybody can check take the picture you can just check and see the pasture so the pasture is open to the animal ad lib feeding not at all problem for the green grass so then animals immunity is very high diseases will not come can you imagine this pasteurized milk you can keep in the fridge for 4 days it will not curdle i purchased this from the machine vending machine nobody is there you pay there vending machine will be on put the bottle pay for the bottle pay for the milk and put it on cap it take it at home keep it for 4 days and see if it is curdled you can challenge this in india hardly anybody gets this kind of opportunity for 4 days to keep a pasteurized milk and here there is no polythene used everything is in glass and another surprising thing you will see people are there paying taking a glass and just putting into the below the nozzle taking the raw milk or you know milk uh, shake and they are drinking there itself i also drank 
so there is a belief that it is pasteurized in indian condition we purchase the milk in poly pouch and then put into the on the heat for boiling so that is a trust which they have maybe because the animals are healthy maybe because they have plenty of greens animal is to decide how much to eat your queries please okay thank you dr shrivastava for the detailed presentation now i'll take up some questions yes ma'am if the time permits i will show you two three designer designer kind of you know uh shed design yeah there are sure. architects working into this and okay. people are spending a lot of money i don't know why i'll discuss that for two minutes yeah please carry on so what is the layout design and why should why should be why it, why it is needed layout design is a must to save your money to save your energy power to to make it compatible you know for the animal as human being because we cannot run our dairy farm in india currently in current situation on full automation those who are telling that we are running on the full automation is not true so because labor and human intervention is there so once the human intervention is there you would try to make it as minimum possible for that shedding is important where to what right so that saves your money saves your animal gives the animal a comfort of standing living sitting regurgitating or living happily an animal separation the shed also provides you the animal separation he for separately calves reared separately the milking animals separately so you have a kind of accounting animal also have a we feeling type of you know relation with the animals so they are more comfortable with the like animals so all those things we are providing heat can be combat water can be you know rain can be uh, you know forbidden if we are having a shed if you are tying the animal below the tree obviously you know how much they are exposed to the atmosphere yeah that is the purpose okay and uh, what's the ideal size of a land for a 50 animal dairy farm yeah we showed in the beginning we showed in the beginning i'll again i'll again go go there and show you yeah if we uh, just uh, go four five slides up then we will see we have given a tentative it is not uh, uh, the sacrosanct yeah here we have given if you see here for 2050 animals we are give, we are understanding that there will be minimum one acre if you don't have one acre please don't start a farm because this 20 animal may not remain 20 animal in in 3 year it they are going to become 50 animal so you have to have that kind of leverage of expansion yes you can stop after 50 animal 60 animal no i will not exceed further and you start selling the heifers selling the calf selling the adult animals and remaining the best animal keeping the best animal in the farm agreed but minimum 1 to 2 acre you have to have for this animal holding then you go for this fodder production 2 to 4 acre are essential for fodder production that may not be in your name that may not be your stable i mean your own land it can be a you know hired land it can be under agreement with the farmers 2 to 4 acre they have to uh, you know raise the fodder and you have to buy that uh, fodder you have to give the inputs for that raising the fodder so those kind of arrangements are there so we divide the land in two parts one is for the animal farm another is for the fodder farm so that data we have given here ma'am yes okay and how do you determine the optimal location for a dairy farm on your land 
yeah that that we discussed here only that the land matters a lot if the land is in a loof area a lot of windy lot of lot of you know dust coming is is a hot area is a perspiring area so obviously the animal is not going to survive not going to live happily because animal itself emits heat animal emits lot of global heating uh, you know gases ghg you know the methane is one of them so if you are not able to considering the comfort of the animal they are not going to be healthy if you are not giving more fluffy green fodder to the animal they are not going to be healthy your milk production will be affected animal will be diseased because most of the in human case now the uh, the research says about 90% your immunity derived from your gut in animal case 75% immunity is derived from their gut and out of this 75% 70% is from rumen itself one part of the of the stomach so you imagine if you are filling the stomach with the garbage just kind of dry food or, or some kind of you know uh, concentrate feed animal is not going to be healthy and this is what happening in india i i have seen at least at least 30 farms where i have purposely gone and told gentleman you please add fiber into this animal is not made for eating banana not made for eating jaggery it is in food additive not the food in gaushalas you go and people load them with this kind of thing puri kachauri jaggery banana so animal that animal is not made for that so what is important animal comfort what is important the location the land the fertility of the land for the fodder development it should be irrigated area it's a dry area definitely you are going to have a risky and you know fortunately or unfortunately i don't know what is the what it call what we should call it 75% of indian animals are into drought zone reasons are many but government has to think on that it is rajasthan part of haryana part of punjab and part of gujarat part of madhya pradesh bulandshahar uh, kya na the part of western up these are the area which are holding the animals maximum animals and they are mostly somehow surviving somehow so people are struggling to feed them green fodder and that so government has to think on the green fodder availability the common resource properties the fo- forest land the gochar land every village has got a gochar land given provided since beginning british period but village is expanding gochar land is being encroached so all these are important for the health of the animal for the productivity of the animal for the for the profit of the farm land fertility productivity is related item so that is how you can decide should i open the farm here or not yes okay yes ma'am yeah okay okay and how to calculate the cost of a shed yeah yeah i'll show you a, a simple slide see this is this slide if you are able to see there are three columns but it is only to calculate the square feet area of the construction like farm house lorry entry dispensary carving shed loafing area 1 loafing area 2 manger size water size everything is a construction so we go to the you know what is the area sorry 
the size in square feet and total square feet area see there are the loafing one loafing two there are two two type of you know carving shed so the same but sometime you will find just double so there are two like see silo pits are two so multiplied by two silo pit 1 2 3 so all this so we calculate each and every entity according to the width and length and then what is the material going into that so square feet we calculate suppose there are 25000 square feet which we are going to construct this 25000 square feet farm house will have per square feet different rate like for the nowadays suppose you go and buy a land uh, buy a, uh, you know apartment so they will say we are selling 2500 rupees per square feet rate here we calculate that the farm house will be constructed in 1500 square feet that will be the cost involved into that but if you go for the quarantine said hardly we take 100 rupees square feet because you don't need to construct a big wall or you know big shed nothing like that so based on the rate of different sheds that we only technical people know that what is the rate we will employ and bankers they know because we prepare the dpr and goes to the bankers so banker will check whether we have taken the correct uh, rating or not and based on that rate multiplied by the square feet the total construction cost is calculated yes ma'am okay and why does the per square feet cost of shed store yeah. dispensary just or now i house? just now i mentioned you need a very very heavy milking shed area heavy built but at the same time quarantine shed where the animal is going to stay there hardly for few days then it will come to the shed main shed that need to need not to be made that much flooring you need just you know <clears throat> interlocking brick on the ground and that's enough because animal is not going to stay there permanently the animal purchased from outside need to be tied separately so that if it is carrying any disease it should not spread to the different animals so immediately we do not add them into the main shed similarly dispensary dispensary wall has to be the main wall i mean good wall like our house so there is a difference between many of the thing like silo pit what is the construction silo pit only making a pit or nowadays pits are not being made nowadays we are just using the uh, plastic uh, drums for making the silos but keeping area has to be there So hardly a interlocking brick will do like washing area for the animal animal will go stand there and there will be a shower on top so only a interlocking area is required and good drain that's all so not very heavy flooring is required rcc is not required there cement concrete is required so that thing makes decides what will have what cost per square feet based on that the total cost will be calculated yes ma'am okay and next question yeah what are the essential considerations on planning a dairy farm layout <clears throat> uh, that we initially we discussed no the planning has to be done thoroughly generally in indian condition the dairy farms are constructed on the uh, you know shipment basis today oh we are having 10 animal okay oh 10 more are coming okay construct a shed line by so drains will not match their whole structure will not match some material will be different here different there so it it one thing that it will not look like that it is a kind of animal shed planned and prepared another thing your labor and the energy conservation drain flow water conservation electricity power all those things will change so better is plan accordingly 
keep a place for expansion suppose today we are having 50 animal tomorrow i know that i'll be going up to 200 animal so i need to have the milking shed constructed maybe you construct half today but for tomorrow there should be the space available so that comes into the planning planning we discussed lot of things and i think if we go to the beginning so two sheets we we did on the planning only see this is the planning what is the roofing what is you know cleanable land what is labor effective what is environmental control what is site plan what is floor plan all is part of the planning yes ma'am i believe i have answered yeah yeah and how do you select the right breed and number of animals for a 50 and a 50 animal dairy farm yeah breed is nowadays there is a see it, indian condition <laughs> please forgive me if i use some word in indian condition generally we go on the hunches there are lot of noise comes from some atmosphere this animal is good this animal till other day we were very much dependent on the hf and jersey now slowly and slowly people have, have understood what is a1 and a2 and you know if you go to the uh, my previous presentation on a1 and a2 milk you will see that is not causing much of the difference in indian condition because indian animals are mostly about more than 75 to 80% animals are a2 animals so there is uh, hardly any effect on indian population but yes it is in our mind we'll go for the gir and you know now the project i saw a project of one of the ca made he used normal milk 35 rupee a liter from the farm and for a gir cow 120 rupee a liter while planning he is planning the cost and he doesn't know that once you sell from the farm in bulk to somebody they will not segregate it like that that this is a2 milk this is a1 milk i'll give 120 rupee per liter of this and i'll they buy the milk on the ts basis if the individual owner is going directly to the consumer there he can charge any amount 80 rupees 60 rupees generally farm milk is uh, you know uh, planned at 60 55 rupee a liter generally because we are planning for 5 years we are planning for 100 200 animals so we cannot take exorbitant rate and we doesn't matter i mean that's, that's not true so when you are talking about what kind of cow it is purely on the air in the in the atmosphere now the air is for the indian breeds and new zealand has been fighting on this part since 2003 and both the owner who uh, i am referring to my uh, previous uh, uh, video both the owners who raised this point both died in the same year thereafter the litigation continued and finally zero they have to withdraw this claim that this a2 animals has got medicinal value it's only in the name of some of the you know our dharma guru or somebody they are you know propagating they are having medicinal value yes panchagavya might be having medicinal value i agree with that i as a veterinarian i understand but uh, a1 and a2 milk so based on that the animal race changes so it will not be hf and jersey nowadays nowadays people are going for the indian breeds and nothing bad because they are equally good elder in the indian breeds but will we be able to feed the green fodder whether to hf and whether to people say why the animals in punjab are giving more milk and same animal when i buy and bring it to bihar their milk comes half are baba you are not feeding them no what punjabis are feeding what a sardar feeds to the cow can you feed that much if you feed that much cow will return that much so it is of course breed is required because if you breed if you breed is good you feed good 
you will get the good result if you breed is not good highest yield is 3 liter you feed anything you feed dry you know dry fruits then also it will give only 3 liter so both things are essential you decide which animal i will be able to feed that one animal has got a body weight of 450 to 650 kg 450 animal will eat something less than the 650 animal uh, kg animal so you have to decide high yielding animals are always preferred because 10 animals can give that much milk which 20 animal cannot give if they are low animal low yielding animals so yielding animal should be decided based on your feeding capacity are you able to feed them are you able to keep them comfortable yes okay and how can technology and automation be integrated into the layout for maximum efficiency yes that's the most important india should look on that and now the what about the government of india is giving the breed multiplication scheme where they are uh, giving 2 crore uh, subsidy first class is there that you have to use the sex semen second that you have to use the embryo transfer technology which obviously ndb is going to guide for to the farmers so it's not a joke that you are just going to keep 200 animal under the tree and you will get that no so you have to be given a kind of undertaking that yes i am going to use these technologies labor as i mentioned there is no place in the country where laborers are being trained no it is only how to establish farm are who will do the labor job where is the technology for tra- training the laborers krishi vigyan kens are, are giving some kind of support into this but even then majority of farm owners pray, go into the hands of the untre- unskilled laborers and they lose lot of money so government should look for those things first there should be enough training material enough training facility so that the laborer can go over there <clears throat> and of course it should be free of cost it should be from the state aided state aided are there but they start t- teaching them technology those technology the laborers will those who have not studied they are hardly high school pass 10th uh, 8th pass how can they understand the technology so that should not be there it's only how to keep the animal how to milk the animal how to feed the animal how to be comfortable to the animal why not to breed the animal so those things so before deciding breed before deciding a farm before deciding even the this kind of structure shed madam one should decide really i am going to use less manpower intervention or not it's important it's really important it saves your lot of money yes okay. ma'am and now we'll so, take the last question what regulations or permits are required for establishing a dairy farm of this nothing side? no regulation no regulation is required madam the moment you go for the packaging this is not a uh, question may not be very much pertinent to this uh, talk but anyway i'll answer that uh, whenever you are going to have a product which is branded product you are governed by the fssci rules till you are selling the milk unbranded unbranded so up to that suppose raw milk anybody is selling raw milk in this country in india nobody nobody can do any any question even here also in uk also if till you are selling the raw milk absolutely no question just sell it a lot of subsidy is there in indian condition also there is lot of subsidy and uh, nobody bothers if you are going for the raw milk selling unbranded like a vending machine is there you go put your bottle and get the milk finish enjoy hardly any rule is applied on that 
but if you are branding if you are uh, selling through the cold chain management and there is a structure on that so you have to abide by the fssci rulings right what i want to show one minute just two three slides just to run through i'll not take time what a designers are earning money to this this is how they design the dairy farm is it visible madam yeah it is visible yeah how they design so this was in hyderabad where the construction is going on so i told them sir the animals will not be restricted they are not human being that you tell them to uh, eat and eat there has to be a boundary there is no boundary in this amiga everything will be you know they will be going here and there so then they put the boundary the blinders i reduced there has to be wall below on the ground so that the animal should be restricted little bit on that and they have to given a pathway yes you can do this thing in uk because they are not guided by the human being they are guided by the rfid collars rfid collar the messages are given to them and the vibration that animal understand and they behave like that so in indian parlance this kind of they are making such kind of good things the people are paying for that thousands and thousand rupees there lakhs of rupees they are charging this is what they design actually this is the cross section which i showed here there are measurements are given there also measurements are given these are the walls which i there also the measurements are given so this is a milking shed so when you go to the transfer section or this kind of uh, you know just a moment yeah here all measurements are given in this plan every bit of it is measured so there need not to be spending lot of money for designer kind of shed this is my opinion it is purely on the person owning the farm they can design any kind of thing no issue okay yes ma'am i think okay dr shivastav so now we have come to end of question round yeah on uh, you would like to share some images earlier you were saying Uh, no th that's what i showed that designer share on those images only i wanted to share i shared it i yeah, this one the the see how simple they made the form very simple so this is what i wanted to show additionally and uh, this one is the designer which i have already shown mm. in your reply i have shown okay. yes ma'am Okay, so now we have come to end of question round. On uh, behalf of agricultureinformation dot com, we like to thank you for a very detailed presentation and answering all the questions in deep. And we also like to thank all the participants for joining this meeting. The meeting will now be closed. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very Most much. Most welcome. Thank you.